when we begin to talk about righteousness and having the full understanding what is righteousness and consciousness you see you being righteous must not you don't mind that ever see God face anyone can be righteous anyone can be a church person but we're talking about knowing God that is what I'm talking about getting to know God not in the sense of what a lot of Christian people do or say God a lot of women say this God is my man God is my boyfriend and things like that come on Let's be real. Stop putting the Creator in that uh, that, that 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 type of uh, uh, what you call consciousness. That's a small place to put God. That's a very small place to put your Creator. That God is my boyfriend. My God, God is this. It's a very small place. We got to be more serious. We got to be much serious in life. And a lot of Christian people don't take their Christianity serious. They don't take their God serious. That is why people can go on the internet and say all different wild, crazy manner thing about Christ or your Emmanuel and you say nothing. That is why they can do that to your religion until you come to that fruition until you come to that place and say i will not i will not make you criticize my god without you hearing my voice i'm going to say something about you your nasty ways and your nastiness and your nasty tongue speaking about your god that we come on come on wake up black people we are living in darkness w what are you going to do everyone going to push you around even your own kind going to push you around too are they going to push you so far in a corner is that is what you want to do while it has run over you you going to say nothing to those who feel to slander your God, your book, your Bible, that is what you're going to do? Well, if you have to do some research, well, do the research. Do, do not be that lazy or you cannot do some research and figure if that is how you want to find them. Or, you know, or, or what you call, uh, refute what they're saying to you. Because I refute those things really and truly. right do your research do what you gotta do because sometimes listen to me you see when people do research they're not going to do a research in a favor for you of course not they're doing a research to prove that there is no god they're going to do a research to prove that uh, jesus christ emmanuel god was never existence in this world that is what their research going to do you see, that is what they want to prove. That there is no God on this Bible, this European Bible. That is what they want to prove to you. So you can walk away from God. That is what they want to prove. That is why they can laugh in your face on the internet. Sometimes the Facebook, sometimes this. They can laugh, sometimes they write it in the books. They can laugh at you. Why you think because you 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 just did this running over you? But I guarantee you, if you start doing your research, if you start understanding the scripture, you can refute these nonsense. You got what I'm saying? So we Christian people, African Christian, let me say it right. We African God, a Christian God to wake up. Anyone can prove anything to you. How are you going to know? Are you doing research to, re to rebut these things? Of course not. Are you doing any research to refute these things? Of course not. You just can say, well, I learned this in a book and you know, probably these people are right. You got to do your research first before you say they are right. Because I can go and do a research 
pull up anything in the past and say to you and you will believe it because you refuse to do your research you refuse to read your scripture you cannot refute things like that by just saying I come on wake up well we could know because we deal with little demons that is what they are little demons that is what I call them little demons you see, anyone that tells me that God, our Creator, is a European man, God, I refute that. I refuse to believe that. I don't even want no proof. Don't bring nothing to me. Don't even talk to me. This is like saying what well, I was I was trying to explain something to 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 some brothers outside there. You know, it's like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Reverend Martin Luther King and um, Kwame Ture. Um, Kwa yes, Kwame Ture and uh, Reverend Martin Luther King. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say it in this way. It's like someone on the outside writing a book about Ma 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 Malcolm X it's like you writing a book on, about Malcolm X you know to, to, for, uh, to validate your point that Malcolm X was a faggot or whatever you say he were or he was and for me to believe that that, that nonsense you see you know we and that's why I say to you if you understand this consciousness you shouldn't let no one write a book and you read it and you believe it because someone said this about Malcolm X no one on the outside you should be reading about what Malcolm X did for his black community you should read no book like that you shouldn't read those books this is nonsense but our, our people because we lack enough consciousness we tend to read other people's book on the outside. Am I saying it right? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Matt, um, Kwame Ture, you know, Marcus Garvey. Nobody should write no book about this man in any negative light and you believe it. To see that these men die for you, your children, they were standing up for you when no one wanted to stand up. So why should you come now and believe anyone on the outside? Because they write a book, they say they find some type of proof that whatever it was. This is nonsense and our people go for it all the time. In other ways, let me put it for you. In other words, let me put it this way for you. If any European write a book on Malcolm X life please do not read it don't read it if anyone write any you let me say it right any European Caucasian write a book on Marcus Garvey please do not read it any any white what they call Caucasian white man write a book on Kwame Ture please do not read it and accept it for proof all the all the interest to do is to bring these people down don't you know it's a spiritual war what do you think the Bible say to you it's a spiritual war so why you keep on believing that these people gonna do something for you? Why? You think they're gonna write something good about Malcolm X? You think they're gonna write something good about Kwame Ture? You, you think they're gonna do it? And if they write two good pages about this man, I guarantee you there's something inside there to bring them down. I guarantee you that. We African Christian must realize this and realize one thing. No one will care for you unless you start caring for yourself. No one love you unless you love yourself. 
And if you love yourself enough, and if you love yourself, you will not make no one write anything negative and believe it about Malcolm X, Kwame Ture, Marcus Garvey, no one. You see, you, you're touching a different grounds here right now. Because these are the men who die for your culture. These are the men. Just imagine they shoot Ma Marcus, uh, Malcolm X in front of his friends, his family. They kill that man like a dog. Just imagine they kill Christ in front of his mother, in front of his father. This is what I'm talking about. So why should you now come unless some little black devil come and tell you that Christ was a white man, he's a liar and a devil? We should not go for it. You should not go for it. This is a war. When you're in a spiritual war, you don't, you, don't, you don't talk about this one and that one and that one. What do you think the Bible is saying to us? It's a spiritual war. They're coming at you with words. They're coming at you with all different things. They're not going to just come with bullets alone. They're going to come to you with a mindset to corrupt your mind about your own culture, about your own people. This is what you got to understand. And a lot of a lot of our people still don't understand it. It's a spiritual war. The Bible keeps saying it. But you making those little black imps, those little black devils tell you that God is a white man. By saying Christ is a white man, by saying Christ do not exist, he's telling you he's the devil. You understand? Of course you understand. Now, this is what we got to understand. And I always say this to you. Don't believe in God because I believe in God. Believe in God because you do in your research. Do in your books, in your Bible. Do believe in God because what's in your heart, what's in your mind, what's in your soul. What do you believe in? Why am I saying it this way? Because I, I'm, I'm not going to influence you. But I'm going to tell you that when it comes to now, Marcus Garvey, because I, I, I guess because you can, this is more tangible to you. It's more in your, in your reach. It's more to your 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 in the free mind, the same what you call age period and, and things like that. The time. Marcus Garvey is not too far along. He's just probably eighty years ago, seventy somebody something years ago. I'm not going to quote it, right? Right. It's just recently. What we talk about him like it's a thousand years gone by. Right? So, um, it's just yesterday. We're talking about consciousness. In everything that we do. When someone says something, reason it. See where they're coming from. If they're coming from a, a, a conscious place, we can deal with that. If they're coming from a personal place, we must be able to deal with that. If they're coming from a European point of view, we must be able to detect all these things. We must be able to tell wherever they're coming from. If they're coming from a European perspective, if they're coming from an African perspective, if they're coming from a personal perspective, if they're coming from a, I want to say African, I mean cultural. The culture. Are they standing on that? Are they coming from that that uh, that view, or it being personal? Because any time, you see, what you got to understand is this: if they attack Malcolm X, 
with words is dead and gone, right? Let's use the word dead because that I'm relating with you, right? Let's say, and they attack him in a book. What do you think they are doing? You think they are attacking Malcolm X? Are you that foolish? Are you that asinine to, to think they are attacking Malcolm? It's not Malcolm X they are attacking. It's you they are attacking. It's, a, it's, it's an indirect attack to you. I first think I fumble it, but you understand what I'm saying. They're attacking Marcus Garvey. It's you. They're attacking. He's not going to attack a dead man. He's dead and gone. It's his belief they're attacking that what you can hold on to. They don't want you to hold on to these beliefs. What did Malcolm X say to you? What he was all about? Wasn't he about you getting up from the ghetto and moving away from the ghetto and having a life of your own? Move away from the alcohol. Move away from the from the marijuana. Move away from all of these negative things. Things. Then this is what the life was was all this life about. For you to be positive. It's not you that's trying to assassinate. It's Malcolm that's trying to assassinate. It's you. You just don't understand it. That's why you go along and say, okay, someone say this and you believe it. You just don't understand they're assassinating you. It's you. It's just like, uh, it's just like uh, Marcus Garvey. It's you. Right? What did Marcus Garvey say to you? With all what all the speeches, everything. Rise, you mighty people, rise. Rise, you mighty nation. It's not Gavi they're trying to assassinate again. It's you. And that's go for Kwame Turi. <clears throat> Excuse me. What did Kwame Turi teach you? Black power. What is black power? The, the economics. That is what he's talking about. Put yourself in power. Work with one another. Do for self. Is, is that something difficult to understand? No, it's not difficult. You see, you could be because you don't know yourself. And you're playing games. When we want to believe in those things. What are you standing on to believe that? Where is your projections? What projection are you standing on? Come on, wake up. You really think that, eh? That they're trying to assass assassinate Malcolm all over again is you. But you don't see it. When you, when you talk, listen. Just imagine that 70 years ago, let's say or 50 years ago, there were black men walking around, black people walking around, not acknowledging themselves that they are Africans. Not walking around thinking they are black. They don't want to relate with blackness. They don't want to relate with 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 with, with Africans whether it's African on the continent or African wherever. These words were not in their mind. African clothes, African music, African everything. So even today. Right? What do you think these men was working on? To bring you out. To, bring, to come to that fruition that what you are. What it's all about. There, there were some Africans walking around really feel that they are British and when I say British I'm not talking about black British like today no, not that I'm talking about they really feel that they were part of the Queen Kingdom they really feel that to themselves that they are part of this that, that kingdom of, of Queen of, of, of England and things like that they represent that that's like in the islands of Trinidad and Tobago, 
Jamaica Barbados, these black men feel they were British men, and not just British men, they were the British men. You can tell these people they are not British. That change just didn't come overnight. Why you think they wanted to run uh, Marcus Garvey out of Jamaica? Because they feel they were British. And in the Caribbean, you if you if you let, let's say you 50 year old, right? Or you 40. Or you got to remember. Um uh, probably 50 years ago, probably most of you were not alive. I mean alive then. But every every Caribbean house, most 90s time, but they have a picture of the Queen inside the houses this is what they used to do the second the churches today in the caribbean every church is still mostly every church is today in the caribbean where there's baptist methodist uh anglican catholics what they have up this photo this picture of the blue eye jesus in the caribbean africa also right showing us the mental sickness of our people it's a sickness Zero. the seventies adventists they do it too they paint blue eyed jesus and then they criticize the catholic church for making statue with a blue eyed jesus and all of these things but they have a representation with a blue eyed jesus and all the angels are white in their books you see we do it but we pretend we don't do it and sometimes we do it but we don't know we are doing it i'm not saying all of the guys in the caribbean who love politics yes some of them get into the business because they love politics they want to do some good but so far we haven't seen those people who want to do good you know why is it that a small country has so much a crime we know there's a lot of drugs in trinidad and tobago there's a lot of crack cocaine that is going along Right, we understand it. And when, when when someone is poor, when people are poor and they get a little a little taste of that money, they're not gonna let it go. Let's be real. And it, let's, that's this is why I always say to you, I'm not gonna go in a little while, but I'm gonna say it. If your bishop, if your reverence, if your bishops and those people are crooked, are you not in People gonna say this is what they're gonna use for 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 excuse. Well, if my preacher do it, I can do it also. The same thing that is you part of human nature. If this one do it, I can do it also. If my government is crooked, well, I can be crooked. Not because it, let us say if my government is crooked, I gonna try to make it better. Some human beings don't think as that in that way, and some human beings do. You see, once I realized that I was doing a lot of nonsense when I was a little boy, I stopped. You know, because you because you come to that fruition, you come to that conscious consciousness, and the only thing can make you stop what you're doing is consciousness. Consciousness is everything, and I know a lot of people were listening to me for the first time. If you do, and you don't understand the level of consciousness I'm speaking about, you may say, "What? What am I talking about?" Because any black man tells me how to make a living how to do this thing right I got to respect that human being I have not even respect love because everyone is just so concerned about money 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 and being rich you see that is the same thing like the pastors the reverence today all the concern is big church big churches is the money where is God? Where is the culture? Where is the love for, for our people? You know, especially, let me say, in Trinidad and Tobago, I know a lot of our people don't talk the way I'm talking. So you're not accustomed with Trinidadians talking like this. This bold face. This, 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 this talk I'm talking, this righteousness. I have no shame to be righteous. You know, people say to me, when you feel you is the only righteous one, well, I say, yes, I'm righteous. Come again. When well, you think I'm going to bow down to you and say, no, I am a righteous man. When I was a sinner, I say I was a sinner. If I was a thief, I would say I was a thief. If I'm a liar, I will say I'm a liar. 
So if I'm righteous, why can't I say I'm a righteous man? Why can I say that? You know what I'm saying? It because I know what righteousness is all about. You see, so that is why you cannot come in my life and just try to corrupt my mind. There's a new Christ. There's a new awakening of our people. This is the awakening of our people right here on Visionary Talk Radio. Who, who is that more what you call bold in Christ? This is how I want you to speak. Be bold in Christ and say, yes, I'm righteous. And when I was a sinner, I know I was a sinner. And I'm no longer a sinner. I no longer do the things I used to do. This is the boldness in Christ. This is the boldness in God. Because all man can be a sinner. All man can do wrong. But once you come to that fruition and see the wrong, say no to wrong. I want to be righteous for my people, for my children, my generation. I can tell you many men that will, that will even become good. So why? Can I say I'm a righteous man in this time? I'm not trying to be. I'm telling you I'm righteous. And I'm telling you I used to be this way. And I used to be that way. No longer that way. So you cannot put me in that bracket of being timid. You think you can intimidate me? You can't even remove me from the seat of righteousness. Oh, can you remove me now from the seat of righteousness? You should have done that long time ago. But you didn't have the sense to know what way I will live in and what I will do in. So that is why judgment is on you now. You should have got rid of me long time. But you didn't know where to find me. How foolish you are. That's what the Bible talk about. You looking and you looking and you cannot see how to destroy it. Foolish should have done that long time ago before i come into this world we come into sin that was we come into but righteousness claim us that is right righteousness claim me and that is why i can talk about those brothers and the internet and call them little devils yes they are little devils Running around on the internet like little boys, calling itself men but wearing skirts. I say it, and I will say it today, and I will say it tomorrow. You cannot remove me from the seat of righteousness, you foolish people. Let me go. Good night to all my fans and family around Ten, the world. Nine, eight, seven, six, 